Hello and welcome to Let's Play Planet Coaster episode 27 here on Theme Park Worldwide. It's a big episode as you can see here from the title and what I've just started. I'm going to be doing the biggest ride I've ever built in this game so far. It is a motion based dark ride and I can't wait uh, to get to work on this one. It is going to span over the next few episodes and all of this episode has been sped up mainly because they take so long to build these things and uh, obviously with it being a dark ride there's going to be a lot to it in terms of the groundwork the structure, what's going to go around it, the roof, and of course all the contents of all the different rooms. Uh, so yeah, I thought I'm going to speed it up uh, just so you guys get to see it a little bit quicker. Uh, but this is going to be the project now for the next few episodes. This will probably take us through to episode 30 now, uh, getting this dark ride finished uh, in the spooky themed area of the park. Uh, but yes, welcome to episode 27. Uh, like I say, in the last episode, in the Halloween episode, you got to see uh, me messing about with some of the theming from the spooky pack. This dark ride actually came as part of the spooky pack as well uh, so it was an up upgrade uh, to planet coaster but like i say well worth it for all the theming that you get and i got to show you that some of that in the last episode in this episode, with us doing a dark ride, and over the next couple of videos, you are going to get to see all that spooky theming in a little bit more detail, mainly because I'm going to be using it on this massive new dark ride. Uh, now, obviously, let's talk a little bit first about the ride system itself. So you can see here how the ride vehicles are spinning round. They're not just going in a straight line. And you might remember, uh, you know, quite a few months back now, when I did the pirate dark ride last summer, uh, how the ride vehicles all just went in a straight line. You know, they would face forwards and then go around the corners as normal with this type of dark ride you can actually change the position of where the rider is so for example you can have the rider go left go right well 90 degrees 180 360 you can keep them spinning around if you want to you can have them tilt up so they're looking higher at scenes towards the ceiling, facing down so they're looking more at the floor or maybe if you're doing some video screens. The possibilities with this dark ride are absolutely endless. And I mean, you know, that's what I'm hoping to do really, use it to its maximum potential and do some really, really nice scenes. So obviously, as you can see here, I'm putting the track down. It's taking a little while for me to do it. The reason because if you look there at the tab at the bottom, you can see on the right hand side where you've got all the different options there for tilting it and spinning it round you can see me there just messing with it a little bit what I actually decided to do was program uh, the way that I wanted the ride vehicle to be as I was building the track mainly because I found it a lot easier planning where the scenes were going to go I mean you might be thinking hang on a minute it looks like some grass uh, with a bit of ride track on it at the moment and that is effectively what it is but in my mind here now I am planning out the scenes and where they're going to go and which way I want the ride vehicles to be facing uh, one thing I haven't done here is programmed the tilt uh, mechanism so you know I haven't programmed whether it's going to be facing up or down or just neutral that's something I can do later on but I've got my initial direction in what the ride vehicles are going to be facing uh, it's worth pointing out this is something you can go back I can edit uh, in the game you don't need to do it from the start like this you don't need to delete that track piece you can just highlight it and change your position uh, but I found it at first quite difficult to to get it right knowing which way you wanted the, the ride vehicle to be spinning and things so I did have a little practice before building this one just on an open piece of land in Volcano Springs and you know I had a little practice uh, just before I started to build this one this mainly because I want it right uh, you will see me throughout the next few episodes uh, you know putting things together and removing bits and adding new bits again because that's what this game's all about it's about experimenting uh, it really is but I'm loving this so far, uh, this dark ride uh, system that we've got. I think it's fantastic how Frontier, the developers behind Planet Coaster, have listened to people's feedback on the game. People have wanted more rides and more flexibility, and this is absolutely fantastic. The fact we can now build a ride like we're going to here, uh, it really is stunning, and it just shows how the game has come such a long way in a year. Of course, we've got the anniversary update coming as well. Uh, there really is so much coming from Planet Coaster, and we've had so much free uh, stuff as well. So many free updates and a few paid updates as well you know so I think it's a fair balance really uh, between the two so as you can see here I've done a little bit of uh, moving around with the trap there can't quite decide what I wanted to do but I'm thinking that scene around the top there just next to the lake uh, obviously all that area there is going to be uh, indoors because it is a dark ride but what I want to do is create like an outdoorsy feel to it uh, and the fact that I have like all stars maybe use some of the space style theme and the stars on the side uh, you know just to give it that sort of uh, feel that you are outside maybe in a graveyard something like that uh, obviously I absolutely love 
haunted themed rides. I love ghost trains, uh, and I love the haunted mansion at the Disney parks. And I'm going to talk quite a bit about that throughout this episode. So coming up in a little while, I'm going to talk to you all about different ghost trains, how I got into loving ghost trains like I do now. Uh, and yeah, just generally have a bit of a chat about that. Again, you can see me here making a bit of an error, making the station a little bit longer, just so we could have some more ride vehicles, which also extends uh, that scene there as well, doesn't it, really? I mean, what I'm imagining here is a really big, grand scene, and as you'll see in a few minutes' time, I start to put that together. Uh, but firstly, I look at this now and think, right, obviously, I don't want the track to take away from this. So this was the point where I thought, actually, let's try and blend the track uh, into the actual structure itself. And you're going to see me in a second start to put in uh, the different walls, the flooring uh, and then as I build the scenes is when I start to actually put uh, the roof pieces on so here we go this was the start of me thinking right let's mark out the actual scenes for the ride you can see me there putting the walls in because the ride vehicles facing inwards and this here is going to be the first opening scene next to the station. Again, you've got to have quite a lot of creativity with something like this. I mean, you know, I, you know, I've built quite a lot of things in uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon before, uh, both two and three. You know, I used to play a lot. Uh, I did prefer two because I liked doing all the theming, but I really did like on three how it gave you that sort of, you know, the 3D effect for doing the layers and things. And the fireworks mix master, that was one of my favourite things with that. See, I have got quite a bit of experience with things like that. Uh, but with this, I've never done anything on quite this scale. Like I said, this is going to be a few episodes to put this together. So as you can see here, uh, I'm boxing in all the, it's mainly the perimeter of the building first. Obviously you're going to have to do a bit of land modifications over there at the side. Uh, this gives you an idea now of how big this dark ride is going to be. Ride time, uh, you know, yeah, the ride vehicles at the moment are going fast mainly because, oh, A, it's sped up obviously, but they are getting quicker anyway than they are going to when it's going round. Uh, they are going to be on a slower setting just so you can actually appreciate all the theming. The reason I had them on a faster setting was so when I was programming, uh, which one Way the vehicles were facing it made it a little bit easier there you go so that project there took about 15 minutes or so just to put the base layer of all the walls in and you'll now see me start to raise them up a little bit obviously there's a couple of trees inside the ride area so I remove those and just generally start to set up if you like how this dark ride uh, is going to go I mean you can get a good idea now for how many scenes there's going to be on this ride I was hoping for about 10 scenes uh, and give or take that's what we've got there including some outdoor areas at this point just here I was looking over and just seeing how uh, some of the vehicles spin on this section and thinking actually you know let's change that a little bit and you can see me making some errors to that just there and um, you know make, just making it perfect really but again that can be done as we move forward with this and add different bits of theming in this point here just putting in another wall that scene there where you can see the vehicles coming through at the bottom left of the screen now uh, that there is going to be a, a a scene with like a bedroom and like all the curtains are flapping and things like that like there's a spirit inside this attraction is going to be you know not inspired by the uh, haunted mansion and things because it is going to be very different but there is some scenes in there that might look quite familiar so i wouldn't say that the whole thing's been inspired by it because there's going to be a lot bigger scenes if you like obviously with the haunted mansion and Phantom Manor at Disneyland Paris and, and the versions of the ride around the world. The, yeah, the scenes tend to be quite small and quite quaint. With this, yes, we're having some small scenes, but I also want some massive show scenes, uh, one of which is going to be just where we are now focused on the screen. And that's going to be a huge show scene, like an attic and going out of this attic with all the ghosts. Uh, at this point just here you can see I'm starting to put the floor in what I do here is put it in in sections So I decide not to cover the track up yet Just so I know where to place theme in because obviously I don't want to put theme in where the track is So you can see me there putting all that out and eventually as I build the scenes I will cover the track uh, turning it into a trackless dark ride that's my aim with this i want it to be a trackless dark ride uh, once it's complete and you can see me there in the station putting them in and i thought actually that looks really good already you can start to see this uh, dark ride here coming together anyway i'm going to leave you for a few minutes with a bit of theme park music then i'll come back to you i'm going to talk a little bit about ghost trains whilst i'm building this of course talk to you a little bit about ghost trains and haunted attractions and what i really enjoy about them so much
Okay, so now that the main walls are in for the attraction, it's now time to start thinking about the inside and the overall feel that we want this dark ride to have. I mean, I'm starting here by putting in some wooden cladding inside what will be the first scene. So you're gonna leave the station, turn the corner around to the right, and the vehicle will be facing forward, straight on, and I want this big dining room, this massive feast going on. Uh, maybe a few special effects in there. I'm gonna use some of the interactive bookcases and things. But that's what I'm imagining here, some massive, Obviously, you've got these panels. I'm thinking at a later stage, putting in some windows on there uh, with some bookshelves, maybe some interactives on there, maybe some uh, candles and things floating on the table. You know, I'm building this as we go, and I haven't really got a massive plan for it, but what I wanted is some massive scenes, uh, and that's exactly what this is here. It's an absolutely huge scene, um, a lot bigger than so to speak than what you'd expect in like the Haunted Mansion and things. Um, so yeah, you'll see over the next few minutes, we're just starting to put some of the panels in, some different wallpaper. Uh, all of this here is from the Spooky Pack. Uh, so if you haven't got the Spooky Pack, you won't be able to get access to these, but it's well worth purchasing, $7.99. You get all this stuff, you get the dark ride, and you can build your very own haunted house. Um, so yes, talking about haunted houses, let's talk a little bit about it. So how did I get into like haunted houses and things? I mean, the uh, dark rides, I tell you now, I love dark rides just as much much as I do riding roller coasters and if you watch our other videos here on the channel you'll know that I always do enjoy going on other attractions I won't ever go to a park and just be like oh yeah let's go on uh, all the roller coasters I always want to go on the dark rides and everything else what the park has to offer and um, so yes it all started for me with the haunted house at Alton Towers I mean when I was a kid I remember riding the haunted house, I think it was about seven years old. I went on it for the first time, and not gonna lie, I was absolutely pooping myself. I was so scared uh, when I first went on it. My parents took me on, but at the same time, I must have enjoyed it because I went back again and again and again. At first, I was a bit unsure, but afterwards, I kept going round and round on it. So ever since riding the original haunted house, it's worth pointing out for those of you that aren't familiar with Alton Towers, the original haunted house that uh, closed in 2003, it was a John Wardley classic. It operated from 1992 to 2002, you know, and it was a fantastic dark ride. It really was. There was no guns. There was not one soundtrack throughout the whole thing. Uh, there was different soundtracks tracks per room and the overall experience of it was absolutely brilliant it really was and it's one of those that I really miss but I've we've heard that that some towers loving care is going on uh, over jewel over the closed season whether that'll be to the extent of taking the guns back out and putting in a new soundtrack who knows but that ride used to be amazing it had so much potential and the atmosphere throughout them rooms you went through these different scenes especially through the spider scene back then it was so much more atmospheric uh, than what it is today and that's the sort of feel that I want to go with with this dark ride. Very, uh, some very dark scenes in there, but very well lit, very clever. Uh, maybe some reds, oranges, green, blue lighting, a bit of purple chucked in there as well, just to give the scenes enough lighting just so you can actually see some of the objects. And um, what I decided to actually do here is obviously the wallpaper wasn't matching, uh, so at a later stage you'll see me actually take this wallpaper down and redo it just so it matches uh, a little bit better than what we've got here because it wasn't quite right. Um, so yeah, moving on from that, Haunted House at Alton Towers, loved it. Then went on to do some of the other classic ghost trains. I mean, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I went to a lot as a kid and did the ghost train there. I mean, that's not really changed much over the years, but I do like how Blackpool add in different scenes every couple of years. They'll add little things to it, make little enhancements. And I think that's a really good thing about the park. That's why I really enjoy Pleasure Beach. They'll go back and reimagine, if you like, older attractions. I mean, not all the time. I mean, you've got to look at the gold mine for that. We did lose the wonderful gold mine, and it was replaced with Wallace and Gromit Philomatic. Um, but yeah, in terms of the actual ghost train at Blackpool, how amazing is that for an experience? Technology in there, there's hardly anything. But the actual feel, you go around there, uh, especially the end scenes when you go down that uh, down that drop and round the scene at the bottom where you've got like the girl with the head that spins round, you've got the bikes going round on a circle, how atmospheric is that? And you go in there every time now, I've been on the Blackpool Ghost Train hundreds of times, but I still get an eerie feel when I go inside that ghost train. It really is one of those classic attractions. And again, as much as this is a very modern dark ride that I'm building here, I do want to capture that feel what you get on a, on a budget ghost train as well in some of the scenes. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a good budget ghost train. I mean, there's some of them out there that, yeah, could 
do with a little bit of work. Uh, however, you know, I do love a good classic ghost train. There's so many of them out there. There is another one of my favourites, the Haunted Hotel at Great Yarmouth Pleasure Beach. Uh, that's a really good classic ghost train. It could do with a bit more audio in there, but still, some of the set design and things, it's just a classic, cheesy ghost train. It really is. Um, and what you can see me doing here is just making enhancements to what will be an outdoor scene. You can see here you've got the black star cloths which are going up. Uh, I want like a graveyard style scene. That gives you a, an idea from down at the rider view of how that's going to look when you're quite low down. And yeah, that's going to be a really nice scene in there. I'm looking forward to it. Lots of blue lighting inside there, blues and purples, uh, just to really take, you know, light up them scenes nicely and take your eyes off the fact you're inside a, a show building. Uh, in all these rooms, the roof will be themed as well. We're going to be theming the roof throughout the whole attraction. That's why it's going to take so long for me to, uh, to, to build this. I mean, what are we in now? What, we're just nearly 18 minutes into this episode. This so so far to get to this stage, we're talking two and a half hours worth of gameplay here to get to where we are. Two and a half, nearly three hours worth of gameplay just to get to where we are. But it's about building them layers. I put it all in first, the floor, and then started to put the walls in. Then, uh, you know, now I'm starting to put the theme in. Him. And you can see me here, one in this area here is going to be like a dungeon style. You're going to come out of that bedroom scene before, and here you're going to be like inside this uh, dungeon scene, you know, and I want this to be all like railings and like a bit like a prison style, uh, what's going to be going in there. It's where it starts taking a bit of a darker twist as we get halfway through the ride. It's worth pointing out, this is going to be a family attraction. We're not going to have loads of, loads of dark theming inside. It is a family-based attraction. Here we go then. You can now start to see me adding in some of the first pieces of theme in other than the walls that I've put in. Here you go, I mean, we've got a clock there, we've got these picture frames, which are video screens as well, it's worth pointing out. So I can actually put videos in these at some point when I want to. Already though, now you can start to picture how this is gonna look. I'm quite pleased with it at this stage. Uh, I really am. So let's talk a little bit about Disney. And of course, Disney are world famous for their animatronics, and especially when it comes to the 999 happy horns that live inside the Haunted Mansion. Of course, the original Haunted Mansion opened at Disneyland in Anaheim, California, and yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant attraction, it really is. Some very different scenes in there to what can be found on other versions of the ride around the world. It's also got a very different exterior. I say that, all of them have got their own unique touches. A couple of them look similar however you look at the haunted mansion uh, you know what you've got over in florida for example and look at the lights of the one at disneyland you know there is big differences in that obviously with tokyo uh, their version is pretty similar uh, to what can be found over at the magic kingdom in florida and of course phantom manor at disneyland paris very very different with the facade what i'm going to go for with this it's not going to be you know, a quaint little building which is sort of hidden away, uh, you know, with the show building hidden away. This is going to be a huge building. It's going to look a bit like a, not like a castle, but some sort of big building from the outside. A big impressive building uh, from the outside is the feel that I want to go with with this. Uh, but yeah, talking about Disney, how they hide their show buildings for like the Haunted Mansion, it's crazy. I mean, Phantom Man is a good one to talk about at Disneyland Paris. You got that small, tiny facade. However, it is built on a hill, meaning that the actual warehouse is hidden behind that hill. Uh, it's very clever in all the trees, all the plants in what Disney do, so you can't see it. The only place you can really see that uh, sort of show building, the big warehouse that it's in, you can actually see it from parts of the Disneyland Hotel. Uh, if you're over in the left-hand side wing in that hotel, you can look out and see see uh, yeah, this massive show building and you can also see it in aerial shots it's worth getting a Google image tab open uh, up at the top and just type in Phantom Manor show building Disneyland Paris and you'll get to see it in a bit more detail and how much that that facade's tiny out the front but you've got this massive show building behind uh, but yeah when I first went on Phantom Manor that was my first version uh, so to speak of the haunted mansion that I got to ride and that was in the early 2000s I went there as a kid to Disneyland Paris with my parents rode it and absolutely loved it what a brilliant attraction and it's so clever how they do different effects in there uh, and that's what I want to do with this really it's being clever with lighting and the Pepper's Ghost effect where literally you'll use mirrors and lighting to create a really nice effect that there is ghosts there. I want to do something similar with this. Obviously, we can't really use mirrors in this game. Uh, not yet, anyway. Um, but yeah, what I want to do here is use lighting and have some animatronics maybe sort of hidden, but you only get to see the reflection on some of the walls. That's what I'm kind of thinking about doing here. Now, obviously, getting back to what I'm doing at this present moment, it's really experimenting with different scenery items. In my opinion, you can't really put too much theme in inside a room, uh, even if you don't light it all up. If it's there, 
at least it's casting a shadow, at least you can see it, uh, you know, in certain light levels inside there. I just don't like blank space, and this will certainly be an attraction what doesn't have uh, any blank space once it's complete, it really won't. Uh, as you can see here, working on the main grand room, this is something very different, you, you have not seen this before in a haunted attraction, uh, this massive themes seeing what we're gonna have here i mean i've not seen that in a ghost train before huge fireplace and um, you know it's, it's a massive scene if you were comparing that to a uk dark ride you know, you'd be saying that this scene here is like a quarter of valhalla's show building at blackpool pleasure beach you know absolutely huge uh, what i'm going for just here anyway i'm going to uh, let you appreciate some more theme park music for a bit and i'll come back in a few minutes time and talk you through a little bit more what i've done inside the game
So as you can see over the past few minutes, I've been adding more details into what will be the opening scene to this haunted dark ride. I do love how the ride vehicles now just floating along there on the floor. You know, it looks fantastic. It really does. I mean, hiding the track. Obviously, you don't have to do that inside your attraction. But me personally, oh, there we go, especially in them lighting levels. It just adds so much more to it. And you can really already start to get a feel of how this dark ride is going to be once it's complete. You can see why it's going to take so long for me to do it because there's a lot of details I want to add into each room. I mean, this scene here, it's not even a quarter of the way finished yet. There's a lot more to add in there. Uh, but you now start to see me talking a little bit about the lighting uh, and what we're doing here. So as you can see, I'm adding in some park hands at the top to shine on that bookcase over at the side. We don't want them to be too bright, hence why the colours I'm using there are quite subtle. You've got like a red. You might think, hang on a minute, it's not really doing much. But it's all about just adding a little bit of effect to it. And here you see me starting to mess about there a little bit with uh, some of the other visual effects. We've got lots of special effects to come inside this ride and lots of triggers to use as well. There we go, I'm just using the flame effect there just to add a little bit of fire. Obviously lowering it in the, the ground a little bit there just so it doesn't give too much of effect. And just checking that it's not coming through the other side there as well because obviously we don't want a, a random fire inside that scene. But yeah, you've got the archway there again, lots more decals to go around that as we lead into the other scene. And yeah, that's what it's all about, really, experimenting. I think here I experiment a little bit with, uh, you know, on, on there with some wreaths. I do decide in the end to, to take all these wreaths down. But I just wanted to have a little mess about, really, and think, yeah, that's it, that's those gone. Uh, you know, and just have a little go with it, really. Obviously, you want to make sure, again, that you are leaving enough clearance room. You want it to be realistic. As much as you could easily place one of these sofas, uh, you know, in the ride track, and it's not going to affect its operation, you want to be realistic with this, don't you? Make sure that everything flows around nicely. Uh, there is, it's a massive scene, this. I want to make sure that the space is filled uh, really nicely. And here I'm looking at different effects for the table, uh, you know, like floating books and all kinds of things. Again, this is something what I'm really going to focus on once all the different rooms are done, thinking about the special effects. Uh, once they're all themed. However, I just have a little bit of a play about here with some books and how quite cool they look. Some of them I think are a bit unrealistic to be honest, but I do want to go with more the realistic approach um, than, than not so. It's got some tables going in there. Like I say, it's like a massive banquet is taking place in here. Um, you know, that's the plan I'm going for. I want to get some food items and things on that table uh, if possible and maybe have some sort of mist screen there uh, for when you're coming through into that first scene. Obviously the station building there on the other side as well. You can see how there's a lot of work to be done inside uh, the station building yet. Yeah, I mean, with that, I'm thinking about having the roof a lot lower than what it is now. But again, the roof is something what I'm putting on last after I've built the scenes. Some more of those picture frames going in there. Again, I can put some videos on there. What I'm thinking of doing uh, is getting a few friends, you know, just to record a few videos and, and just put them on there, you know, like doing a scary face or something like that. Um, you know, or maybe getting a few of you guys to send them in if you're up for that. Uh, but as you can see, you know, we're drawing towards the end of this episode, only five minutes or so left. Um, but I just hope that this episode's really started to give you a feel for what I'm trying to create with this. It's my biggest project I've took on in a long time with this game for a good few months, because let's be honest, I'm not at the time Time for Planet Coast. I've had so much going on with work. Obviously, I work at Alton Towers. I am there throughout the winter. A lot of you have asked me as well. Uh, I do a bit of maintenance and stuff there over winter, painting up, all that kind of thing, recruitment for the next season, all that stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that's just answered a bit of a question for anyone that wonders what I do at Alton Towers over winter. But obviously, it's been scare fest, it's been fireworks. I've been working 14 hour days and I've been so tired, hence why there's not really been any massive projects in Planet Coaster for a few months now. Uh, but this is one, this is the biggest ride I've ever done in the game uh, you know and probably will do for a while so yeah I hope you guys really enjoy it after I finish this I'm going to be going straight into building a coaster as so that will be coming up in a few episodes time maybe for episode 30 I mean watch this 27 uh, 28 and 29 are definitely going to be doing the dark ride potentially episode 30 as well but we'll see how it goes. Maybe start work on the coaster in that episode as well. It all depends uh, how things go. Starting work then now on another scene. This is going to be my attic scene. And this is kind of inspired uh, by the Haunted Mansion. And that's famous scene, the staircase scene, where you've got staircases at all the different sides. You look all the way around the staircases. This is what I want to do, but obviously a lot bigger and better uh, than what Disney did there. Because, well, it's Planet Coaster. It's not real, is it? It's not costing me anything. Obviously, if this, you know, you, you, to create something like this, 
obviously cost an absolute fortune, it really would. I mean, this dark ride is huge. But yeah, with this, you've got staircases, what just leads to nowhere, basically, and we'll put some uh, more wooden panels in there and things. You can see some posts going in, and just lots of random things. This is gonna be an attic scene. Uh, so it's basically like an attic, and it's leading up to all these different areas, more than it is a, a landing, so to speak, inside the Hawaii mansion. But yeah, with this, this, this attic's gonna lead you into the next scene, so to speak. It's like you've gonna climbed up one of the steps and into this sort of secret hideout in the top of the attic. And that'll be the next scene going on where the ride vehicle is in the background there now. And um, with this, I'm gonna add lots of crates in there, uh, like some pottery, portraits, lots of cobwebs and things. I mean, the cobwebs are great what came in the spooky pack. Really realistic they are because they're not tacky, uh, but you can still see through them a little bit, you know, so they've got a really good effect to them. But yeah, with this, it's all being about a bit disorientating with this scene just here and just making it look as realistic uh, as possible. The floor is something what I decided to change in here as well because I looked at the floor and thought, hang on a minute, this is supposed to be an attic. Why have we got uh, you know, this stone flooring? So you'll see me change that uh, in a few minutes time uh, there as well. But yeah, just going back to talking about you know the ghost trains and dark rides in general, I just think that with a dark ride, you can go on it, you can appreciate the storyline, the theme and everything about it. And as much as I love roller coasters, going forward, dark rides, I just find it so much more fascinating in terms of how they're all put together and how that atmosphere is created and especially when you're building your, your own one in Planet Coaster like this you know it is you know it makes you realize god you know this is a lot of work goes into putting these together there's so much thought that goes into it so as you can see at this stage here just taking out the floor as I mentioned a minute or so ago and replacing it with that nice attic floor and obviously now I know where uh, the track is I can cover up the track in there making it that trackless motion based dark ride and already bam it starts to look like an attic that didn't actually take that long to do probably about 20 25 minutes in real time to put that together and now it's all about just putting them layers in there building things up uh, i'm going to be coming back to this at numerous points you know coming back to all these scenes these are nowhere near complete but obviously it's just putting in the basic scenes deciding what each room's going to be i mean i've got 10 rooms to play with here it's a lot uh, a lot of different scenes just making sure i know what i want to do and then going back and adding uh, more detail there inside as well. But yeah, as you can see by the length of the video, we are coming towards the end of this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed watching. Of course, it's always a pleasure bringing these to you guys. I really enjoy, uh, you know, making these and playing the game. And I really enjoy looking at all of your comments, what you guys put on the video as well. I mean, I do read every comment on the channel. I read through them every night. I get home from work or whatever I've been doing and read through all the different comments, uh, you know, to see what you guys have done so thank you very much to everyone that's very supportive of theme park worldwide and of course our planet coaster series but look at that already you can start to see the amount of detail the amount of stuff in there and that's without even adding atmospherics like smoke and lighting and you'll see that happen just in a moment here there's them awesome cobwebs that i spoke about a few minutes back I mean, yeah, it just looks nice, that does. It's all about putting in random bits of things, building up the layers. And I know I talk about layers a lot so far in the past year, but that is really uh, what it's all about. Don't worry, it won't be long until you have another episode of Let's Play Planet Coaster. I have already started recording the next episode, uh, and I've already done a few more of the scenes inside this ride. And let's just say, as we move into the next episode, you really get to see this dark ride coming together. About half of it is done, uh, you know, by the time we get halfway into the next episode. So I hope you guys really enjoy watching. Make sure you come back and check it out here on Theme Park Worldwide. That is all then from me. I'll see you in the next episode, and that means it's time to cue those credits. See you later, guys.